we're starting a series that basically describes each one of our horses and um, and what kind of rehab things we do to help keep our horses healthy. So tonight we're talking about Tucker. How old is Tucker? He's 17 years young. Um, now he doesn't really show his age because he's feeling so good. <laughs> And mom might post a video, some video proof of that. So this past weekend, Emma cut on him, and um, he actually kicked up while he was yeah. cutting. Uh, yep. We don't know if, what we think happened is one of the cows behind him maybe bumped him, and he, uh, he kicked up. <laughs> you know, and he was already, he was already kind of mad over it, um, just because... The cow wasn't moving. He was getting mad. He's putting his ears back. And he had kind of shifted his weight around and um, reached out, and then he just bucked. <laughs> so it was kind of cute. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so to take everybody back, so Tucker. Um, we got Tucker in July, and so we kind of started trying to piece together what his history was. And he, um, so basically he was bred, a, a guy out of Lincoln, Nebraska bred him, Gary Gross, and his registered name is Holly Sandrolina. And his dam was, uh, I think like Sammy Sandrolina or something like know. that. She was a She's a bad, bad, bad cat. Yep. She really, um, she, I guess, had a lot of really nice cutting horses uh, that that she produced. So, so anyways, um, so Tucker, I, I think back then he was called Arnold. Um, he went on to the cutting pen and was campaigned uh, pretty heavily through 2000 and... 2012, I think, was the last year that he um, has NCHA cutting earnings, and he made about about eleven thousand dollars earnings in the mm -hmm. NCHA. Um, I did pull up an Equistack uh, report on him, and um, it's rumored that he fractured his right front fetlock at some point, and I assume it was right about then mm -hmm. and um i don't know exactly where he all went after his fracture but he ended up with a family in brewster nebraska and um they high school rodeo with us their son is is a senior and emma's a junior and um they had heard that we had been looking for a another cutting horse, Justin Bradley, the dad, he approached me and he said, hey, I got this old cutting horse. Um, he won't pass a vet check. He's, um, he's not sound, but he doesn't take a lame step in the cutting pen. And would you be interested in him? And I thought, you know, I don't know. And, and he said, well, he, he took my son to nationals. He ended up 11th in the nation uh, in 2017. Mm -hmm. Been to nationals. A few times. Yeah. Maybe, well, maybe even all four years of his... I can't... I can't remember. Yeah, I don't know for sure. Um, but he said, you know, he, he does have a limp. And um, he said, you guys can just keep him for the fall and see what you think. And you don't have to buy him. You know, just just see what you think. And he sent me a picture of him. And he, he is a big horse. And he had a long tail at that point. <laughs> And, uh, and so this was in June mm -hmm. and so Justin brought him down to our place, um, the 5th of July mm -hmm. and he had no tail <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Justin said something had chewed off his tail, um, between the time he took the picture and, um, when he delivered him, but, um, what did he call him, a he looked like he should be on the. Clyde still on the um, Budweiser team. Yeah. yeah, he's a dun, so he probably yeah, wouldn't do probably that. Wouldn't but have done um, that. he is—he's a really neat, neat horse. And and Justin said that they, you know, he had just been sitting in their pasture, and 
Um, they hadn't been doing much with him. And, and so, you know, he was like a lot of 17 year old horses. He had, his teeth needed to be floated. Um, he needed some weight put on him. Um, he needed to build back some body condition. So we started uh, going to work with him. And you'll notice there's a pretty significant head bob mm -hmm. going both to the left and the right at a trot. And then, so we, we started him on Summit because we have that on hand. And, um, and so even with just being on Summit for a week, I think he had two shots, mm -hmm. um, there was already a decrease in his lameness. And so, mm -hmm. um, so we kept working on him. We started doing range of motion stretches with him mm -hmm. and um, Gracie started doing a lot of that. Mm -hmm. And we started doing tail pulls with him to help build up his hindquarters. Um, and just riding him on soft surfaces. Mm -hmm. um, and then our vet came mm -hmm. and we had, uh, we had him do some x-rays of his uh, front fetlocks and there was zero cartilage left in the inside of his front fetlocks. And when he walks, he walks, uh, he hits on the outside edges of his feet first. Um, and I'm sure that is to avoid pain. Mm -hmm. But um, so we injected his fetlocks to start yes. with. And so we just slowly started working through everything with him. And, and once we injected the fetlocks, there was less lamp. Yeah. Um, you will probably not see a lamp unless you are watching, unless you know the horse and know there's something there. But if you were just to walk out and watch him just long trot, you would think he's perfectly sound unless you know his history and you'll be able to see and pick out just a little bit. But yeah, and on harder ground, yeah. he, he's probably a little more lame than mm -hmm. he is on, you know, soft sand. Mm -hmm. I really don't think he is at all. Like no. when you lope in a cutting pen or, you know, mm -hmm. in the warm-up pen. Yeah, he, yeah. he really looks, he looks outstanding. And so um, it's been a really fun process to go mm -hmm. through. So, so we got started him on, on a bunch of feed, um, started him on the summit. We did the injections of the mm -hmm. fetlocks. Um, and then you took him to cut the first weekend in August. So I did, yep. We had had him about a month. Yep, and um, he hadn't had his hawks or stifles injected at that point. You remember that? Okay. Um, they, he, so he was a little front endy. Mm -hmm. Which honestly, we got away with it because um, he is a big horse. He's able to hold his line pretty well. He's outsmarts the cattle most of the time. He knows their next move before I know their yeah. next move. <laughs> he knows more about cattle than him. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> so you know, we were able to get away with it. I think we were like third, and it wasn't mm -hmm. pretty. The cattle weren't great, but that's why we. That's why I used him. Mm -hmm. um, He's my go-to when stuff isn't going to be good. Yeah. And so just watching him travel across the cutting pan, and we'll, we'll post those clips too, um, you could see that he wasn't real comfortable on his hind mm -hmm. end. And so that's when we decided. Oh, and here's another thing too. He was, com he was probably, he was pretty comfortable, and it was looking okay. And then the pen itself was very very deep and it yeah i mean you do want it deep for cutting but it was um a lot of sand on top of a hard hard pan black dirt surface and it had been torn up at that point and he slipped pretty good mm -hmm. and that's when he shifted all of his weight forward yeah so uh like a week or two after that we decided to go ahead and inject his or check his hocks and stifles. We knew they were sore, um, but we were just kind of trying to see what we needed to do when uh, we weren't just going to go give him a lube job and inject everything. Um, but then she kind of needs, but <laughs> he does kind of need it. But um, so then we did his hocks and his stifles, and then you used him towards the end of August, or no. Middle. Middle of August. 
Yep, at I used Lexington. him at Lexington, yep. And we had just had his Yeah, I rode him system. like twice. Yeah. <laughs> and he worked He worked really well. Outstanding there. Yep. I used him when the cattle were hot, um, tired, ready to be done, and I think we got like second and second. I think you did, yeah. Yeah, you so, did. did did well on him. Yeah. And then um, he had about Oh, about a month that he didn't mm -hmm. have to cut. Mm -hmm. And then you just used him this past weekend in Broken Bow. You could tell he was a lot more, he was freer. Oh, he was and beautiful. He worked on his hind end. You also worked on that in the practice pen yeah. of how to get him a little bit sharper. Mm -hmm. um, Mark Casper Bauer is the one that works with you on oh, that. as well as Don and Kelly. And Don and Kelly Troyer. Mm -hmm. And so just teaching you what you needed to do before you went in to cut to kind of get him woke up a little bit and get him just a little snappier in his turns and I mm -hmm. think it worked mm -hmm. outstanding. Yep. So I would have to agree. Old tuck tuck. Old tuck tuck. So so yeah, um it's it's been a process of working through not only his, you know, his teeth, his joints, his weight, his muscle and conditioning mm -hmm. and then re you know I don't want to say retraining but just getting him tuned back up again yeah I, guess. I mean it didn't take much no he's <laughs> he's very automatic yeah. I and mean, what do you have to do when you're up there oh um, I mean I kick with my just depends on what leg um no not you don't normally have to do the cow side though. leg nope yeah just finish off the turn most of the time that's it yeah Sort yeah. one off. Yeah. Drop your hand. Finish off the turn. <laughs> okay. Tuck will take care of you. <laughs> yeah. So he's pretty neat. Yeah. Pretty neat guy. So we'll. Um, uh, he loves his job. We'll continue to keep everybody updated on Tucker, but he's been a pretty neat project for us this um, summer. He's worked uh, worked his way into our hearts. He's in kind. Probably the kindest yeah. horse we'll ever have. He's very kind. Uh -huh. He's, and like we said, he's 17 years young. Yeah, yeah, he kicked up in the pasture today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mom spooked him and he took off a bucket and rode in. And, yeah, I wish we'd have had that on video, oh, yeah. but um, he's, he's, he's probably spoiled at our house now. He's got his sheet and he gets his grain feed twice a day. And, yeah, but he's... He's a pretty neat horse, so. Okay, anything else you care to add about Tucker? Mm -hmm. Just. He's kind of watchy for being yeah, an old 17 year old <laughs> horse. Like, you wouldn't put a kid on him. No, you wouldn't. Because he rode him, I rode him around in the arena in Broken Bow and they had tarps up along the side and he was looking. And <laughs> <laughs> He, he doesn't really jump out. You know, even yet. and even compared to our other cutting horses, those two are fairly lazy and um, not watching. <laughs> but he is, and he's the oldest, and he's the watchiest. He's the watchiest. But sure. he's um, pretty neat. He's probably our funniest one. Yeah. He's like a cartoon horse. He is. He's a goofball. Yeah. Stay tuned, and we will. Uh, you can find about that.